The topic of today's discussion is sulfidation corrosion in a Klaus waste heat boiler, a case study. And in this, we will go through an introduction into sulfidic corrosion and try to get some basic understanding as to what this is. I'll then go into a case study detailing what it is that we're looking at and what we're trying to accomplish. And then I'll wrap that up with discussing some results and some of the findings from the case study, and then close with some concluding remarks. So first of all, what is sulfidation or sulfidic corrosion anyway? The general description is high temperature attack of metal by acid gas, namely H2S. In most cases, this temperature of increased corrosion rate can be defined as temperatures exceeding 650 F or 343 degrees Celsius. Because this type of corrosion is characteristic of high temperatures, this is typically a concern for the front end of the sulfur plant, specifically the thermal reactor or reaction furnace and the waste heat boiler or WHB. These pieces of equipment are refractory lined in order to protect the bare metal surfaces, but only the front end of the waste heat boiler tubes are protected, and this is through the use of ceramic ferrules that are inserted into the tubes, usually about six to eight inches in. And so, because the whole length of the tubes is not protected, special attention needs to be paid to what is happening along the length of those tubes in order to prevent the higher temperatures from exceeding beyond the protection of those ferrules. Now, metal temperature and H2S concentration are the two basic parameters that go into determining the rate of sulfidic corrosion, but there are several different factors that go into determining what that tube metal temperature actually is. These factors include the heat flux, fouling resistances, both the process side and the utility side temperatures, as well as tube geometry, meaning whether it's a triangular pitch versus a square pitch, and how tight those pitches are, along with the protection of those tubes in the front of the waste heat boiler, meaning the refractory and or the ferrules at the tube to tube sheet joint. We'll focus on heat flux for this discussion, and heat flux is defined as the rate at which heat is exchanged from the hot process gases through the tube wall and into the utility water, which will ultimately carry that heat away in the form of steam. The higher the heat flux, the more heat is being passed through the walls, and so the hotter those walls become. This can pose a real threat to the integrity of the boiler tubes due to increased risk of corrosion. This is one of the many vital design parameters that the engineers who design these units look for. One thing that will become important later is oxygen enrichment. Oxygen enrichment is an easy way to push an existing unit beyond the nameplate production capacity but there are several risks that go along with this if it is not designed for and implemented properly. An already borderline heat flux can be compounded by adding in oxygen and can push a unit over the brink of failure. So, if this sulfidic corrosion is such a problem, how can we monitor and plan for it? And the answer is through understanding and carefully calculating it, usually with some kind of simulator. The general method for estimating sulfidic corrosion is based on the Cooper-Gorman curves and was recently confirmed as still being applicable in today's operating environments by Alberta Sulfur Research, or ASRL, through careful lab analysis. These curves are available for a variety of metal types, namely chromium containings such as stainless but also for carbon steel, and is widely used for assessing corrosion rates for hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide containing systems, such as in a Klaus waste heat boiler. Now the original Cooper-Gorman curves were based on NACE committee T8, and those original curves were modified in the recent past to be more representative of observations found in the field. However, the original curves were recently validated by ASRL, and so the original Cooper-Gormans are the basis for the following study. The case involves a North American refinery that was considering adding oxygen enrichment to their Klaus unit in an effort to increase the production capacity. 
oxygen enrichment is in an SRU can be a simple and inexpensive way to squeeze more hydraulic capacity through a plant without requiring a huge cap capital expenditure. This essentially increases the oxygen content in the combustion air, which reduces the content of the nitrogen, allowing for the capacity taken up by nitrogen to be used by H2S in the feed gas. This type of capacity expansion has been practiced successfully for many years, oftentimes without any incident or adverse effect to the SRU. However, if the plant is already dangling on the edge, adding in oxygen can be the straw that causes it to fail, sometimes catastrophically. As shown in the PFD, the plant in question is a three-bed Klaus unit with a front side split. This particular plant was processing both sour water acid gas and amine acid gas, and this front side split design is a great way to increase the temperatures in the front zone of the thermal reactor in order to get better ammonia destruction. This plant also had a two-pass waste heat boiler, which is fairly common as these can take up a fairly significant uh, amount of real estate as well as have mechanical problems due to long tubes if done in a single pass. So two passes are pretty common. This plant, as mentioned, was looking to add oxygen up to 28% in order to gain extra hydraulic capacity in the SRU. One interesting thing to note, however, is that this plant's wasty boiler was operating at a fairly elevated steam chest pressure, somewhere between 650 pounds and 660 pounds per square inch gauge, or 44.8 to 45.5 bar. Normal steam chest pressures in a waste heat boiler are usually somewhere between 300 to 600 pounds, or 20 to 40 bar. So this one was fairly high over the top end, comparably speaking. And this will become important later in the discussion. A model of this plant was set up using OGT's Kinetic and Heat Transfer Rate-Based Sulfur Simulator, Sulfur Pro, in order to gain a good understanding of how these changes of adding in oxygen enrichment were going to affect the general operating parameters of the plant. Uh, the simulator does have a sulfitic corrosion prediction model built right into the calculations, and so these values are calculated as part of the model's output. The available corrosion models are the original Cooper-Gorman curves, the ASRL research data, and the modified Cooper-Gorman curves from Martens et al. And gives a great understanding as to how the corrosion rate changes along the length of the boiler tubes. The model that was used for this study was the original Cooper-Gorman curves, as these had been validated by ASRL, as I mentioned before and so we felt that they would give the best representation as to what was going on within the tubes. Sulfur Pro also gives detailed descriptions as to the heat transfer occurring along the length of the boiler tubes, calculating heat flux, tube wall temperature, and mass flux to name a few. I've included here a screenshot for both the input on the right side and the output on the bottom. And you can see that you have a choice of which corrosion model you want uh, to use, as well as what metal types you want to look at for the original Cooper-Gorman curves. On the output screenshot, you can see that the waste heat boiler is segmented along the length of the boiler tubes. And so there is a ton of information that you can get out of this. For example, the duty, the LMTD, the overall heat transfer coefficient, the heat flux, inside tube wall temperature, and the sulfidation corrosion rates at each segment. This is a truly detailed image of what is happening inside of that equipment. This graph here shows two curves illustrating how the tube wall temperature varies along the length of the, of the boiler tubes for both the air only base case and the intended change of 28% oxygen enrichment. And from this graph, it's clear that there is a fairly significant difference between the two cases, especially at the front end of the waste heat boiler, at the critical tube to tube sheet joint. And this is the point of maximum tube wall temperature. And you can see that even the base case air only operations is running slightly elevated above the recommended 650F or 343C maximum. And this problem is only compounded by the addition of even a small amount of oxygen enrichment. 
This next graph here shows the same two cases looking at the base case air only versus the intended change of 28% oxygen. But this time we're looking at the sulfidation corrosion rates in mils per year along the length of the boiler tubes. In this graph, it becomes even more apparent that there is something going on with this particular waste heat boiler. The peak corrosion rate for the base case air only operations is around 21 mils per year based on the Cooper-Gorman curves. This in and of itself is alarming as this is already twice the recommended maximum corrosion rate of 10 mils per year, which is where most of the last 20 feet of the tubing is hovering. As we add oxygen enrichment, this problem is only compounded, pushing the corrosion rate up to 33 mils per year, three times the recommended limit. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, 20 versus 30 mils per year, I mean, that's not really a big deal, but in reality, this is a 50% increase in corrosion rate just by adding in low level oxygen enrichment to an already borderline plant. This particular plant was already operating at the caution zone due to the elevated steam generation pressure in the waste heat boiler and incorporating oxygen enrichment would compound the already existing problems in the plant. This is shown by the increased tube wall temperature going from around 650F to just over 700F. The ultimate result of this is a much higher than recommended sulfidation corrosion rate, which increases from around 21 mils per year to around 33 mils per year, which again is a huge increase statistically speaking. So we wanted to go back to the basics and try to understand how the waste heat boiler seam pressure affected the two important parameters of tube wall temperature and sulfidation corrosion rate. This graph shows the waste heat boiler from our study at four different steam generation pressures of 150, 300, 600, and the operating pressure in pounds per square inch under oxygen enrichment of 28%. This would illustrate the worst case scenario as shown in the graph. As the steam generation pressure drops, so does the peak tube wall temperature shown on the far left side of the graph. The graph shown here is from the previous slide. However, this shows the sulfidation corrosion rate at each steam generation pressure rather than the tube wall temperature. This clearly shows that as the steam generation pressure increases, so does the resulting sulfidation corrosion rate. It's clearly evident that the steam generation pressure of the waste heat boiler directly influences the tube wall temperature, which in turn influences the sulfidation corrosion rate. It really becomes clear then that even with very modest levels of oxygen enrichment and quite a low utility side pressure, it's still possible to get a waste heat boiler to show concerning levels of sulfidic corrosion at and near the tube sheet end of the boiler. This particular plant appears to have fairly elevated rates of corrosion even at the lower steam pressures. And this is a point that we are trying to investigate further to get a better understanding as to what's going on and what is special about this particular plant. The corrosion prediction feature in Sulfur Pro utilizes state-of-the-art research and allows areas of the plant that cannot be easily monitored with instrumentation to be much better understood, especially when considering changes to the operating condition of the plant. In this particular plant, the real limitation may have been the original waste heat boiler design and the choice of steam generation pressure. With the rigorous waste heat boiler rating feature in Sulfur Pro, a what if analysis such as this one conducted in this study can help engineer out previously hidden problems. Corrosion in this kind of equipment cannot be easily seen until the equipment undergoes a multi-million dollar failure causing the unit to have an unscheduled shutdown and more lost profit. The ability to identify and predict dangerous operating conditions has enormous economic value. To give some perspective, whenever changes need to be made to an operating facility, the change is made and then the operating companies usually resort to either doing nothing and waiting for the equipment to fail or before the change is made, contact a consultant or engineering company and pay a high price to conduct a study, get the results once, 
and wait until they have to repeat the exercise the next time they need to assess the consequences of further changes to the plant conditions. But there is another. A third and economical alternative is to invest in good, reliable, and accurate modeling software, such as Sulphur Pro. The model can then be set up for the plant not only to assess process changes, but monitor the plant on a weekly or even daily basis to help pinpoint problems before they cause an outage. This also helps to gain more in-house expertise as well by helping the plant engineers better understand how their plant's operating and what the limitations of that plant are. Sulphur Pro supports the expert in you.